from WFRB-TV Local 5, your local election headquarters. This is Newsmaker Sunday with your host, Tom Zalaski. Good morning. Welcome to Newsmaker Sunday. I'm Tom Zalaski. Wisconsin's unemployment rate dropped to 2.9% in February, which is good news for our state. But even with that low number, there is a drawback. There are more jobs in the trade industry than there are qualified workers to fill those positions. So joining us this morning, two people who are looking to help fill those positions and train the students who are going to become the skilled worker. Jeff Knaus to my immediate right, the business manager for UWA 40, uh, 400 Pipe Trades, and Nels Lawrence, the Youth Apprenticeship Coordinator at Kakona High School. Gents, thank you both for joining us this morning. Thank you, Tom. Thank Much you. appreciated. Uh, Jeff, you first. How serious is this issue, is this problem in Northeast Wisconsin? Oh, it's, it's a very serious issue, Tom. There's a lot of great opportunities within the building trades, especially at local 400 plumbers and steam fitters. And we need, uh, we need additional manpower to fulfill the job needs of our contractors. Uh, right now, in the next five years, we're looking at probably anywhere from two to 300 members retiring out, at least certainly being eligible to retire in the next five years. So, Nels, how important is it for students to, to, who are interested in these trades? Uh, how important is it to get them started early in this? How early do you start them? Well, actually, the earliest that they can start is right at the end of their sophomore year. Of high school. So they're just 16 okay. years old, and they can actually start in youth apprenticeship at that point in time, and they would be a, what we call a two-year youth apprentice. So they would have two years of high school youth apprenticeship prior to actually entering the workforce full-time. That gives them a big jump start, and uh, it also gives the uh, employer an opportunity to take a good look at a student and say, this is somebody that we want to invest some time and money into and develop. Now, Jeff, what kind of skills do these kids need? These high school students, they just need to have a will uh, to learn, a will to at least work in the trade, and show up every day, right, show up on time. That's the most important, isn't it? Absolutely. That's the biggest, that's the biggest need that they have to fulfill is showing up on time, and having an interest. And are there certain skills that, that, that the kids go for more than others? Uh, welding is probably a big one, a big it attraction. Is. Sure. And so. is that where we have one of the biggest shortages? We do. We have a, we have a large shortage in, uh, in welding, but as well as HVACR service and plumbing. You know, so we've got a need in all of our crafts. Yeah. Jeff uh, uh, Nels, uh, how has your job changed? Because now you're dealing with technology that you didn't used to deal with when you were a, you know, a teacher years ago. Well, <clears throat> I've always dealt with technology. My background is, is technology, both here and in my military career. But one of the things that you see in technology, there's always something new out there. So what we've done at school in order to prepare these students is we actually have the latest and best technology. So, for example, a student that says, well, I think I'm interested in welding. They take the basic welding course and the equipment that they're working with is the best of the equipment that's available. In fact, we've got a very nice donation just the other day from Local 400, brand new, excellent welder. We have a great relationship with Miller, one of the, of course, largest welding manufacturers in the world, right. and they've given us some excellent equipment. So when you come into our work area, these students are actually working with the real equipment that they might actually use out in the field, and then our instructors are trained we provide a lot of dual credit classes that are in conjunction with Fox Valley Technical College. So a student has a chance to really get some pretty high level stuff before they ever get into the door of, or in, in sometimes at the same time while they're doing a youth apprenticeship at the high school level. So it's a big opportunity. And then of course you can talk a little bit about the opportunities that Local 400 is providing for mm -hmm. our students. And these yep. jobs today, this is not your dirty factory work anymore, is it? No, absolutely not. Yeah. No, a lot of these jobs that, that Nels provides youth apprentices and move on to be apprentices and then journeymen in our trades are cl very clean environments in our right. fabrication shops and as well as the, uh, the job sites are, are much cleaner, much more safer than they ever were years ago. Yeah, that's a big change. I, I notice that when I walk in at the facilities, the air quality, much, much better than it was 20 years ago. The, uh, the standards of, of everything in the industry is top flight, but the trick here is that what we're selling in our area is high skill, high tech, and if you want it cheap and dirty, you can get that someplace else. Right. But the reason that our people were still working when we had a recession 
was that we have that ultra high quality. A lot of the products that are made here that our students are working on, they're not used around here for like chemical plants, for example, there are no chemical plants in our area. That stuff goes on a truck and gets shipped all over the United States, but it's made right in Kirkana. Right. And that's what keeps everybody here in, in business is that precision, high skill, uh, high ability. And of course, that's what I'm looking for in the students too. Mm -hmm. for for either of you, how did we get into this predicament, into this situation? Too many jobs, not enough skilled workers. Hmm. How did it happen? Well, I, I think there's there's a couple things I think at play, Tom. And one is, you know, your baby boomers are probably the largest skilled trade workers. We're all retiring, I being one of them. But also, I think there's been such a push on students to go to college, and they th and whoever it may be that's telling them that, think that's the only path they can take sure. to be successful. And it's, it's very untrue. Uh, the fact of the matter is, if you serve a four or five year apprenticeship, uh, with us it's all five year apprenticeship programs, you're looking at well over six figures possibly by the end of your apprenticeship as a journeyman, plumber, steam fitter, HVAC service tech or fabricator in our trades alone. It's a great opportunity and not only provides you with a a great income for your family, but also provides you with health care and as well as all the retirement benefits that you would need when you, it's time for you to retire. So you're looking at a six-figure income possibly at mm -hmm. the end of that as yeah. opposed to going to college looking at a six-figure yep. bill yes. <laughs> and a six-figure debt. Yes. Quite, quite so. One of the things that I see with our students, in fact, we just recently shot a, a commercial, so to speak, which is on our website. And um, I talked about students who've gotten into these trades. And I said, well, you know, he's 28 years old. This student has already paid for a small starter home. He doesn't have a mortgage. He's got a new pickup truck. Right. He's got some toys. This is the reality for a student without large student debt. Uh, the other factor is, of course, with the parents, a lot of parents are thinking college, college, college. Um, there are wonderful opportunities within this field a person could be a journeyman, for example, and make really large amounts of money. But also, somebody has to run these companies. And, for example, Team Industries in Kakana is a major employer. They have, what, three, 400 employees mm -hmm. at this point. One of the key players there at an upper-level management position was in my classroom, class of 2000. He started out there year one. He was doing the dirty little jobs. He was the beginning guy. Second year, he was grinding metal until his arms were tired. Uh, today, he's top-level management, but he went through an apprenticeship with Local 400. He had leadership skills. Uh, there's a lot of upward mobility in the industry that people really don't understand. You taught him well. We will talk more about the trades right after this, so please stay with us.